Good morning. My name is Marita Ruiz. I'm part of a contemplative outreach prayer community. My word is gladness. There were not many words left when I had to choose one, but I knew this word was waiting for me. How on earth do we find gladness in times like these? How do we find gladness amidst so much sadness, all this madness? We are living in dark times indeed. Life has become so much more difficult the past two years since the COVID pandemic started. There is so much suffering going on all around our globe, pain, sickness, death, hunger, violence, natural disasters, to name a few. Wave upon wave of this pandemic seems to overwhelm us. Just when we feel that we can come up for some fresh air, a new variant and a new wave appears in our midst yet again. On a very basic level, all beings think that they should be happy. When life becomes difficult or painful, we feel that something has gone wrong. But difficulty is inevitable in human life. We find this message from Jesus about our lives on earth in John 16. I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. In one of her daily reflections, Sarah Young, in her book, Jesus Calling, writes, Expect to encounter adversity in your life, remembering that you live in a deeply fallen world. Stop trying to find a way that circumvents difficulties. The main problem with an easy life is that it masks your need for me. When you became a Christian, I infused my very life into you, empowering you to live on a supernatural plane by depending on me. Anticipate coming face to face with impossibilities, situations totally beyond your ability to handle. This awareness of your inadequacy is not something you should try to evade. It is precisely where I want you, the best place to encounter me in my glory and power. God is the Lord of the here and now, of the present moment in this particular place, and this is where he meets us. C.S. Lewis said, For the present is the point at which time touches eternity. If we seek to encounter the divine, it can only be where we are and in no other place at this moment. In the very ordinary and in the challenges of our daily living, this is where God finds us and where we touch the sacred and the divine. Our temptation is often to believe that God can only be genuinely found in a perfect place, a place of holiness and peace, that we will only truly encounter God when the time and the conditions are right. 
This belief is what prevents us from a genuine encounter with the divine at every moment and in every situation of our lives. This is what the Incarnation teaches us, that God is found in the ordinary and often messy and disorganized reality of our lives. In fact, our most profound experiences of God are to be found in the everyday rhythms of our lives. This, this incarnational spirituality teaches us that God chooses to reveal His presence and love to us in the ordinary people and events of our lives. But how do we go about practically finding God, finding His peace, joy and gladness in our everyday lives? I'm a contemplative, which means that my spiritual practice is grounded in a regular practice of meditation Centering Prayer and Lectio Divina or Sacred Reading. By spending time in solitude, just sitting in God's presence to be with Him, not saying anything, not asking Him for anything, is what keeps me rooted in Him. It is a daily discipline. It is as simple as setting thoughts aside as they arise, as they most surely will, by means of a sacred or a prayer word. It can be a simple word like love, joy, peace, Abba, Jesus. It is the prayer of Matthew 6.6 6, where Jesus told his disciples, But when you pray, go into your most private room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I'm going to read Psalm 131, which describes to me the essence of centering prayer or the spread of stillness. Psalm 131. Childlike trust in the Lord. A song of ascents of David. Lord, my heart is not proud nor my eyes haughty, nor do I involve myself in great matters or in things too difficult for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child resting with his mother. My soul is like a weaned child within me, composed and freed from discontent. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, from this time forth and forever. By going regularly within, by sinking into the depths of our being where God dwells, where God is always present, His joy and gladness, amongst others, will mysteriously start to form inside of us. We are being transformed to live our daily lives in a totally different way, seeing in a new way. So I invite you during this Advent time and beyond to create space for Him in the cave of your heart, to sit in silent surrender for a few minutes each day, savouring God's presence, enjoying His companionship, basking in His love rays allowing him to transform you. May the oil of gladness wells up from that deep place within us and flows through each one of us out into this world, making God visible. Emmanuel is here. <laughs>